Namo tassa bhagavato arahat Samma sambuddhasa namo tassa bhagavato Arahato samma sambuddhasa namo tassa bhagavato Arahato samma sambuddhasa Asaruta de sangamatasa tavara Ye Sorawanta Bamunjan to Sada. So this is the observance night and the Thursday, conventional perceptions. We we can this is Thursday, May the eighth, observance night, two thousand three. <coughs> That's uh, those are the facts. <coughs> so bringing into our awareness uh, that these are this is the conventional world of time, uh, where we have. Uh, Dates, the names of we name the days of the week, and watch the phases of the moon. We have the different phases: the quarter phases, or the new moon, or full moon, or the observance nights. So these are the conventions. Remember, these are names that we apply to experience. So in a kind of cultural conditioning, social conditioning, we all agree that uh, we w- this is Thursday, May the 8th, 2003. And yet in other places it's a diff- we have the name of the year is a different number. <coughs> So uh, just to bring into your awareness that this is, we we create these names, these conventions. It's it's me that's thinking this is eighth of May two thousand three. <coughs> but in terms of this moment, and as I'm sitting here on this high seat, uh, it doesn't need a name, does it? Is is as it is. So I say ignorance is where we we don't know the difference between the conventional reality. We think it's we think it's it's ultimate reality. It's the it's the real world. And so the conventional world that is when you really look at it. You can see through it. It's not <coughs> conventions are very limited conditions that we apply to experience. So that we're learning to use an intuitive wisdom rather than just uh, try to endlessly up give names and values to all the. Uh, different possibilities of the conditioned realm. Like when you study Abhidhamma, then you you have you know, very complicated terminologies that, that, that define and describe differences of phenomena in subtleties. So that's 
you know, that uh, that g- seems to go and incre- get increasingly more complicated if you just uh, study Abhidhamma on an intellectual level. They then meditation is where you you are recognizing ultimate simplicity. So what's more simple than here and now, the present, the way it is? Now, when we use the word the way it is, uh, it's more of a pointing, you know, look at the way it is, it's like it's this way. And whatever you're experiencing right now, I'm not telling you how you should be experiencing it. You know, that that it's merely the Thursday, the 8th of May, 2003, and that we're all thinking that thought and experiencing this moment with that particular uh, convention. Isn't it? Right now, whatever is happening, only you can know what's going on, what mental state, physical state you're in at this moment, or how you interpret this experience. So the way it is, is it's, it's a merely a reminder, pointing to, not describing or defining. So in these, the uh, wisdom teachings of the Buddha are pointers. They're not, they're not defining wisdom. Uh, they're not trying to tell us uh, what's right and wrong or what's ultimately true. They are conventional conventions, admittedly, that are meant to point, to awaken, for you to to see for yourself. So when you, the simplicity of the moment can be filled with complexities. <coughs> so say at this moment, is just the awareness is very simple. The awakened awareness. It's not, not a complicated, difficult thing at all. It's natural, very, very simple. But in that, uh, in the awareness in this moment, you can be full of complication. So you're you're emotionally feeling this way. You're physically in pain. Uh, you're you're intellectually confused. Uh, you're feeling sick and cold, or you have a fever and you're too hot, or you're being irritated by something or other in the room. And then, uh, then we can wind ourselves up into a, a real complicated state of, of fighting with ourselves, intellectually fighting with our emotions and trying to suppress our physical condition. <coughs> but if we, if we recognize uh, the way it is, so if at this moment they Awareness is simple. And then in that intuitive moment, because the, the intuition, intuitive wisdom, holds everything. It's not, it's not uh, picking or choosing. It's not uh, discriminating, preferring one thing over another. It accepts everything in this moment. So it's like tuning in to this radio station. (laughs) And then what's happening? So uh, I find it very useful to to use this sense of awareness. And then I can tune in to actually the the conditions that, that that happen to be that I'm aware of. 
the, the physical sensations or emotional quality or views and opinions that might be going through my mind, likes and dislikes, preferences, prejudices, opinions and views. And so the awareness though is to be aware of them as, as they are, not according to values. You know, if we put, we have, we might, uh, you know, the thinking uh, ability is, the, it puts values on things. This is good, this is bad, this is right, this is wrong. Intuitive awareness isn't, isn't this discriminating on that level. It's not uh, evaluating anything or defining, it's just noting. Goodness is like this, or badness is like this. Feeling, feeling pain, pain is like this. Emotional stress is like this. Being intellectually confused is like this. So your, your awareness then uh, notices, can, can discern that they intellectually I'm very confused. Confusions like this. So in that state of, of receiving whatever is present, you know, you're not trying to suppress anything or create a problem or exaggerate any condition or state that you're experiencing. You're just noticing, allowing this moment to be what it is. Because uh, Logically speaking, this moment can only be this way. Isn't it? But if, to say if I don't like this moment this way, then part of me says, I don't want this moment right now. I want it to be different. But that's asking for the impossible, isn't it? This moment is like this. And it can only be like this at this moment. Let's face it. And if I don't like this moment, I can be aware that that's part of this moment, not liking and wanting it to be otherwise. <coughs> so people get, I get letters asking me about, well, if I just accept everything as it is, the way it is, uh, then I'll, you know, I just have, I'm just going along with everything, you know, I don't have any ability to, you know, to act or that, I just kind of, kind of resign myself to the way it is and and if everything's going wrong I just go along with it. And that's because you, you don't quite get the point. You know what I'm pointing to right now is that at this moment, which is all we ever have really, the experience is always now. You can imagine having experiences next week. I can imagine having experiences in Svalbard, in the Arctic Circle. Right now, I can imagine myself meeting a polar bear. But that's imagination, isn't it? And that's, that's happening now, if I imagine that. That's, that's the way it is now, but that's, that's an imaginative experience about the future. So exploring this moment is all there ever is. You know, the enlightenment is now. Birth and death is now. Everything is now. The next week, next of those, that'll be the Vesak, Visaka Puja, the celebration of Buddha's birth, enlightenment, and death. I think it's very important, at least I found it, you know, to always affirm this. The, all there is is now. You know, there's no, the future is unknown, the past is a memory. So memories arise in the present. Memories don't arise in the past or the future. When you remember, it's always now. The unknown, what we don't know, could be, might be, Hope, I hope everything will go right. I, I dread, I fear that everything might go wrong. But all those, those mental states we create now, don't we? Anticipating 
fearing, dreading, worrying uh, is a mental state we create now. So just exploring this now In uh, seeing that all conditioned phenomena is impermanent is one way. The base on Karani Cha. So this is this is a way of of just reflecting on the way it is, isn't it? It's, there's nothing permanent in it. Whatever emotion, thought, physical sensations, whatever they might be, good or bad, there. If you really observe, if you allow them to be what they are, like can thinking last very long? You know, thought moves very quickly. Emotion kind of lingers. It can you have emotion? It creates a mood or an energy in the body that that lingers uh, around you and. The physical body, you know, is is a coarser condition, a kanda that's coarse. So it it seems more kind of solid and permanent than the others and the mental ones. But if you're really aware of the body in the now, you see, it, 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 as experience, the body is a, is is a changing experience. It's it's moving, it's flowing, it's vibrating energetic. There's nothing static about it. Nothing that you can find has any kind of permanent quality to it. But that you, you recognize through awareness, not through believing. Uh, you, you know, you're not asked to believe that the body is impermanent. If that body is impermanent is a suggestion for you to ex explore, investigate. Is it permanent or impermanent? So what could be more simple than, than now? The future could become very complicated. People, what happens when you die? You know, what did Buddhists believe about death, afterlife, reincarnation? And that, and and we can get that's uh, interesting. I admit, you know, possibilities, views, and opinions about when you, when we die. This, you know, you'll be reborn according to your karma. Is, you know, say so if you led a good life, you'll be born in a positive realm. If that foolish bad one, you'll be born in hell. But this is this is merely thinking in the now, isn't it? We don't really know this. It's a, it's a speculation, it's a thinking where a viewpoint that you might pick up from somebody else. Not saying it's wrong, but just pointing to the way it is. That, you know, when, when we die, when someone dies, then you might believe that nothing happened. You're dead, you're dead, oblivion. There's no heaven, no hell, just complete um, disappearance, vanishing, no punishment, no... Uh, but those are still thoughts and speculations and views and opinions. So recognize, putting things in their proper place, recognizing that thought, views, opinions are like this. You know, some are very interesting. We have a lot of theories, interesting ideas, intellectual uh, theories can be e endlessly fascinating to to our minds. But when you're exploring that with intuitive awareness, then you can't sustain it. You know, you, after a while, you get bored with it. You know, and you end up in the state of not being quite sure.
So the one that in this moment, the only thing you can ever trust in is the awareness, the awakened state. Now that's the, the refuge. Buddha Dhamma Sangha, and they take refuge, and that's what, in a practical way, then they're taking refuge is as simple as just being aware. Because according to my experience, that's the only thing I can trust, is the awareness. Then in the spiritual path, of course, you you can have, we have so now at a time like this, uh, here in England, for example, there's so many views and opinions. You know, so it, that, that about meditation. So that this is a time where, uh, you know, you, you go to Watkins, there's uh, bookstores in London, and you go, uh, sir, surf the internet and you can find endless uh, information on meditation, Buddhist or whatever, and about how to do it, what's right, what's wrong, and what's the best, what's a waste of time. So that we, we uh, you know, most of us do have some intuitive sense in regards to this. Some people don't. They'll believe anything. Other people <laughs> well, and just get confused when they hear different viewpoints from very assertive positions. But what you can know in this moment is it's like this. If I'm confused or I, I totally committed to some, to some particular viewpoint. If I'm committed to the viewpoint that our way is the best way, we're, we're really the only way to practice and everyone else is lesser. That's a condition I'm creating in my mind, isn't it? And I might believe that. But if I trust the awareness, I can be aware of believing that as a condition I create rather than a reality that I delude myself with. Because in awareness, it's not a matter about the best or the worst or right and wrong. It's, it's, re it's the recogni recognition of the way it is. And the guidelines of Sape Sankarani Cha. All thoughts, uh, can you, is there a permanent thought? <laughs> It's ridiculous, isn't it? Do you find any permanent? I mean, thinking is such a, you know, rapidly moving function. Goes all over the place. Or emotion. Sometimes emotions seem permanent, especially like depression or negative ones when you don't want them. And that, because what that makes something seem permanent is not wanting it, like pain and and depression and despair, and, you know, the, because we don't want them, then, then they seem to last longer than they really do. If, we're, if we see them with awareness, we can see them just as they are in the present. They are what they are. If we try to get rid of them <coughs> because we don't like them and we're not aware of that, then we, then we tend to create the illusion that it's going to last forever or that we're suffering longer than we really are. So desire to get rid of, you know, to push away, resist, creates this illusion of, uh, of lasting forever. Like when you get depressed, isn't it? You feel you're never going to be happy again. And if you're really clinging to depression, the mood of depression, and it, it seems like there's never any possibility of having one happy moment ever again. But that's how it seems. Then 
then we reflect on sape tama anatta. All Dhamma is not self. But Dhamma is everything. And it's all inclusive. There's nothing outside. The word Dhamma includes everything. Conditioned, unconditioned, good, bad, heaven, hell. But that's not a doctrine. You know, to grasp that uh, as some kind of doctrinal position to take is, isn't recommended. It's, it's a reflection. It's to, to for you to investigate. It's, it's a suggestion to the mind, a reminder. What, is there any, is there an, an experience right now, can you find any permanency in yourself? at this moment. And so, the exploring the self, the, the ego, and the, my personality. Uh, and so we investigate. My personality uh, is conditioned. I wasn't born with this personality. So the personality is something that arises and ceases according to conditions. And how happy I am as a person or how unhappy I am as a person depends on conditions, supporting happiness or unhappiness. That I'm feeling bright and, and uh, useful and, I w and good about myself depends on conditions. Uh, feeling hopeless and despairing and want to kill myself, that depends on a condition. My personality is, uh, you know, is, is, is created through, it's a habit. It's a habit one acquires. So you, through our, as we grow up, we acquire different habits, emotional habits and viewpoints and cultural conditions, biases, prejudices, views about ourselves, whether our self-worth and so forth accordingly to uh, experience. So, the personality, Sakya Titi in Pali, is to be recognized for what it is. It's not permanent. So it's interesting just to see that like the subjective experience, mindfulness, being aware, puts me into the, the pure subject before I'm a person. Like just on this, this awareness, just this awakened state before I become a personality. So this is to be, you know, to be um, investigated. What is it? I know when I'm in the state of just pure awareness, there's, there's no person involved. For me to become a person, then I start thinking. I have to think to become, I'm Ajahn Sumato. Uh, that's a thought. But if I resting in just the awareness before thought arises, there's no person. So then, when the personality arises, it it changes. So, I, you know, it's a nata. They can't find any kind of solid person in any of it. Happy tomato, sad tomato, successful tomato, failure tomato. These things are dependent on condition. Can't find any solidity in it. Anything that is really tomato in any permanent way. 
because that that the even the name tomato just rises and ceases. So this is you know this is when we call using intuitive awareness, intuitive wisdom, is to discern this. So the Buddhist path is a way of discerning, like panya, uh, sati panya, sati sampatanya, our ability to intuit, to look into, insightfully see, discern the way it is, or phenomena as impermanent. Then the illusion we have about ourselves as a kind of permanent soul. I'm a separate soul. Uh, a separate person. The sense of separation depends on me clinging to thoughts about myself. So I'm Ajahn Sumedho, you're Ajahn Misuti. And I've created separation. But I've created that separation. That's not the way it is. is it? That's the, I've created that illusion of separation. If I don't create that, then it's like this. So, so that, that I'm not creating a separation. So you begin to realize a oneness in the present before you divide it up into two and multiples. So this is, this is a way of, say, of uh, jnana dasana, or the way of, of uh, wisdom, panya, developing through sati and through panya, liberation from the illusions, the delusions we create out of ignorance. You can see all the world's problems are created out of ignorance. I mean, Palestinians and Israelis are divided into two groups. The axis of evil is in Iraq, Iran, North Korea, Syria, and France. That's, that's dividing, isn't it? I've divided what is evil and what and we're good, of course, they're bad. <coughs> that's a creation out of ignorance. <coughs> so, in, in all the wars and and all the r problems with the relationship. We, we, we don't realize the oneness we share, so we're always picking away at the differences. You know, so, you, 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 you know, how many people really recognize the oneness with, some, with another being? So our, our relationship's always about our differences. And so we, and then, the, the, you know, you're like this, and I don't like that when you say that. And I don't like you when you don't, when you look at me like that, and you should be, and you shouldn't be, and a good wife is like this, and a good husband is like that. And I'll never forgive you for doing what you did or what you said to me, and so endless conflicts arise. So that it's, uh, you know, there's because there's not a recognition of a oneness anymore, so like a marriage <coughs> wouldn't be a oneness between a man and a woman. <coughs> but then marriage becomes even, you know, what's the point of it? Because nobody knows what it's for anymore. It's just kind of a legal binding thing that you get, in, you know, it's that the society doesn't even uh, support very well anymore. So 
because the, the, the oneness is forgotten and the importance of individual rights is, is emphasized. You know, so some of these very wealthy film stars, rock stars, before they get married, they have to have a lawyer and uh, make an agreement that if they get divorced, <laughs> that, that only so much money will be given to the other. <laughs> <laughs> it's very complicated. <coughs> but in in recognizing the oneness, it's very simple. That's why it's not, you know, it's easily not seen because uh, modern society, you know, it just it it doesn't like oneness. It wants to pull us out into extremities you know, to be the best or to fight off the forces of evil and to be the winner, be the success and dreading and, and despising failure, hating failure in oneself or others. And so, so that the society we live in is, is tends to move towards extremes and so it's the, the oneness is, n is not recognized or appreciated. In the Sangha, for example, the oneness, isn't it? Not that we all think alike or agree or, or uh, on, on every issue and that, but uh, the oneness is through the awareness, not creating two. But yet we can have endless problems in the Sangha about monks and nuns and se juniors and seniors and authority figures and anagarikas and anagarikas and lay people and you know it gets complicated and you get different nationalities and and races and different views uh, some are into therapy, others are into Mahayana, others are into uh, Almath, and others are into Advaita, and others are into all kinds of other things. And so on the level of differences, we can qu quarrel endlessly, you know, and uh, look down on each other, or despise each other, or feel threatened by each other. But underlying that, if we really trust the awareness, then we begin to rec to realize it's a real realization, is like reality, real, now, the oneness. Before we start creating, I'm, my view is this, and your view is like that, and I'm a senior monk, and you're a junior monk, and all that kind of thing comes into, into the consciousness. So this is why it, it's, you know, it's uh, to, to develop, to really practice, to pawana, develop the path. And it's to recognize this oneness, this point of pure awareness before becoming takes place. So, you know, what I've done over the years, I mean, uh, I remember having the insight years and years ago, but then uh, one gets so overwhelmed by one's habits and emotional habits. And this is where it's uh, uh, trusting in this awareness. What Really get to know it. It's very simple, just to, just to pay attention in the present that embraces everything. It's not not trying to get rid of anything. If if there's noise, uh, cacophonous sounds, um, whatever, too hot or too cold or whatever, it all belongs in this moment. So awareness, remember, it includes everything. 
where personal preference will exclude. I don't want that noise. It's too hot. I don't like it. I can't meditate when it's too hot. Or it's too cold. I can't really sit, stay in this room if it's too cold. Uh, and then we get into what I like or don't like or should or shouldn't. But and the awareness includes all that too. Includes our way our personality operates. So it's, it's behind everything. Before you become, before you arise into rebirth is becoming somebody that likes or dislikes. Then only you can recognize that. That's why it's an intuition. intuition. You know, you, I can point to it, what I'm doing right now, at least trying to. But, uh, you know, it's something you, you have to know for yourself. Bhajatang Vaitidapo Vinyuhi, to be realized yourself. Well, I'll stop here.